Well, he played really a, a key role. You know, the, the origins of the game came through groups of uh, Christian students at both North Carolina College and at Duke University. We're in the middle of the war, but, you know, everything in the South is segregated. Uh, segregation laws tell you where you can eat, where you can live, where you can be born, where you can be buried. You know, no blacks are on juries. There are very few, if any, African-American policemen, things like that. Uh, but there are groups of students as we're fighting against uh, the Nazis and the Japanese that are looking ahead and they would like to see us come out of the war and end segregation. So they started having secret prayer meetings together. And out of one of those meetings, the discussion came up about which school had a better basketball team. And uh, uh, the North Carolina college students felt that they did, but the students from Duke felt that this Duke medical school team, which had scrimmaged and handily beaten the Duke varsity, was uh, the best team in town. So that's where the idea percolated. But in the end, it all came down to John McClendon. You know, one thing to remember about McClendon and basketball in those days is African, there was no television, of course, uh, very few games were on radio, uh, and the African-American colleges were not allowed to play in the NCAA tournament or the NIT. So unless you happened to be in one of these rather small gyms where they were playing, you didn't know how good they were. But McClendon's team was way ahead of everyone else. This was the highest scoring basketball team of any level in the United States that year. And he had really figured out a new modern way of playing, but he did, he told me he didn't know, you know, could they compete with white players? Were they going to be good enough? And so he wanted to find out. And as I describe in my book, The Secret Game, there's a number of steps that led him to, to giving a green light to the game. 